You're very welcome back. So you'll have seen yesterday what was uh, certainly in GA terms pretty much an unprecedented press conference in uh, that world. We've seen it in other sports, obviously in Irish sport down the years, but uh, all the captains are certainly representatives from all uh, the teams uh, gathered and in effect inter-county camogie players and ladies football players will play out the rest of this season, quote, under protest. So... They've cited the failure of the GEA, the LGFA and the Camogie Association to come together and implement a player's charter as the primary reason for this move. And by a player charter, they're talking about pretty basic standards when it comes to player welfare. And the players said that while the three associations, quote, claim to be listening, it is evident that they're not truly hearing us. So there is clearly huge frustration there. And Tom Parsons was uh, speaking on their behalf as well as part of the GPA. So to uh, tease out some of the issues and explain what's going on here and what should be going on here, very happy to say we're joined by Dr. Aoife Lane, who is the head of the Department of Sport and Health Sciences at TUS and founder of the women's uh, GPA as well. And as will be important for the discussion. She was also one of a three-person research team. You might have seen this in the last couple of weeks with Dr. Katie Liston and Tyrone's Connor Myler, who produced uh, a policy brief on how integration of the Camogie Association and the LGFA and the GEA uh, might go in an ideal world. So Dr. Aoife Lane is with us, as is Maria Kinsella, co-chair of the GPA's National Executive Committee, a former chairperson of the women's GPA and a former Carlo footballer. You're both very welcome. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Joe. How are you? Very well. So, Maria, I suspect uh, a week out from Championship, none of the players wanted to be in a hotel in Dublin talking about these issues, but there they were. There's clearly huge frustration. I think just for people um, who have busy lives and can't, can't follow everything in granular detail, we might just paint in broad terms where we are in this particular world at the moment. So, as I understand it, last spring, the three associations at their respective um, congresses voted for making integration a priority and and, uh, they would say that's what's happening and they're en route to that. Uh, Two months ago, the GPA uh, released a state of play report where they had surveyed their members and it had shown up a whole array of uh, very serious and but also basic welfare issues for female players. And so on the back of that, uh, the GPA got on to the three associations and said, look at this report it's a bit of a shambles here for lots of our players. Can we come together and sort out a player charter for 2024? And apparently the GEA declined. They have said, well, let's let integration happen. Uh, According to the uh, Gaelic Players Association, the LGFA didn't even respond. Now, the LGFA have denied that, so I don't know where the truth lies in that one. And the Camogie Association said, sure, come on in, make a presentation to us. And that happened last week, but I don't know uh, where that's uh, gone from. And in effect, uh, female intercounty players have said, come on already, we can't keep hanging around. Is that like the broad context for what happened this week? Yeah, pretty much, John. I think it's probably provided a bit of context. I just want to maybe call out a few of the stats from that state of play report because that that's what we're focusing on here is absolutely the basic minimums of player welfare. So currently at the moment, there's 36% of female players who don't have full access to a physio or SNC. There's 83% of players who don't have uh, full access to a gym. 79% don't have regular access to a team doctor. And that's before we even open the kind of warrant that is player expenses on the female side. So this is very much focusing on the basic minimum player welfare needs. Uh, and I suppose over the last number of years, there's been a mandatory or a voluntary female charter in place. And on the back of what we've seen in Kildare, Camogie and in Cavan football over recent months, along with the data from this report, players are now calling on the need for a mandatory female charter. And I suppose one of the real you know, constant stories we're seeing is that without a mandatory charter, the provision of services like, you know, SNC and physio, it can actually vary year on year, very much dependent on the manager in situ at the time or the uh, or different county executives in place at that time and the strategic vision of a county board and where funding goes. So what we're looking for now is actually a mandatory female charter for the 2024 season to iron out these issues that we don't have teams like Cavan or Kildare uh, having to do what they have to in the last couple of months. Mm. And is the biggest barrier to doing that a financial one? 
Yeah. Um, and look, we're, we're very aware, do the LGFA or the Camogie Association in their own right have the financial needs to fund a, a female charter? Probably not. Are we looking for an absolute equivalent male and female charter next week? No, we probably realise this needs to be a little bit of a journey and a phased approach. But if we look to the GAA, there is definitely money there that can be used to, to, to fund this charter. And if we're all committed to integration, and if all NGBs have passed that motion at Congress over 18 months ago, mm. like integration isn't a question of ifs, buts, maybes. It's a question now of how and when. So at some day in the future, there is going to be a female uh, mandatory charter. So why not let's start working on this now in tandem with the integration process? Because in our opinion, one of the biggest levels of inequality in Gaelic Games is actually at the inter-county scene. So Aoife, you, as I mentioned, worked with Conor Myler and Katie Liston, as it happens, just your own research paper on how integration of the three associations might go. And I watched uh, Katie Liston on OTBAM a couple of weeks ago, and she was making the point like, this is quite an unusual um, integration or merger, whatever term you want to use. Like there's, there's no perfect model out there in global sports for a multi-entity, multi-sport integration. There's no evidence-based way to do this necessarily. There, there are things like Golf Ireland, but that was uh, the, the, the same sport, obviously, and, and just two organizations as opposed to three, and probably not the same power imbalance, perhaps, uh, there. And she was asked, well, how long, to do this properly, how long would integration take? And she said, to do this really well, it could take up to five years. Now, there's not a chance in hell uh, the female players, GA players in this country are waiting five years for a charter to be financed. So that would suggest the GA and the LGFA and the Camogie Association are going to have to really prioritise this. Or, or how is this playing out? Your perspective on the whole thing, please. Yeah, Katie and, and Connor were on a couple of weeks back and she's right. A minimum of five years, Joe, you know, I mean, it's so complex. Um, like the three organizations, as you as you as you pointed out, the two jurisdictions, North and South, um, the complexity of Gaelic games anyway. Um, you know, it's it's so ingrained, it's so parochial, it's so localized. Um you you could also say you know, our structures, you know, you, you have a lot of voices, a lot of representatives, even I'm sure you've had shows on Central Council and how hard it is to make decisions. So it's a hugely complex organisation and it's so deeply rooted culturally as well that we all have a massive opinion on it. Like if I start saying here now, will we change the name of the GA, you'll already have a breakdown. And, you know, so we have to be very careful. So I think Katie was probably being um, generous and I know we don't want to put a timeline on it, but I know a couple of years back I did a piece and I would think by 2034, which is 150 years of of the GA, we would have full integration. That does not mean that a merger can't happen in five years. But as Maria kind of mentioned there, that full equality piece is so deeply rooted and complex, it might take a lot of time. So the other piece then is, you know, you're asking how wouldn't they get ahead of this? They've done a very good job for the clubs. So there's been one club guidelines. I think they came out in 2017. Um, they were, they've were they given a blueprint to clubs about how to work together and come together. Um, it's complex and I've, I've done it in my own club and maybe you guys have, have, have been there as well. But at least there was a policy, there was a set of guidelines we could work to. So I would see why wouldn't you do the same for counties? You know, it, it would make sense that you might have some one county guidelines to start that process because the level of change our document proposes, if you want to achieve that principle of equality, which is the statement that Mary McAleese had in that first um, output from the integration steering group, mm -hmm. it would be one association built on the principle of equality. The level of change to achieve that, it probably frightens me. I would be a massively pro-integrationist, but through this process, I'm probably much more balanced and reserved now about, God, this is going to take time and there's an awful lot of mindsets to change. Well, that, so that, that brings us to a very interesting pinch point then. And yeah. So the steering group, so basically, I, I, not surprisingly, the Camogie Association and the LGFA and the GEA, when they all voted through let's do yeah. integration in the spring of 2022, they said, well, look, this is very complex. We need some independent guidance. Steering group is founded. Yep. Mary McAleese seems like an incredibly smart woman who couldn't disagree on her being in charge. Everybody's thumbs up. Yep. Now, Mary McAleese um, said in February that, you know, we're in a listening phase right yep. now and we could be listening for the rest of this year. 
And yep. uh, you've outlined the complexity. So I'm not sure, listening to the interviews that the uh, players gave yesterday, that they're of a mind to pay too much heed to that complexity for much longer. I think, Maria, you outlined it um, pretty succinctly. This is going to happen. So in the short term, GEA, if you're serious about this, goodwill gesture, get together, finance the charter, and we'll worry about makeup of boards and yeah. protocol and the CCCC and all that fun stuff. Let's do that over the next five years. We're not hanging around for that, Mary McAleese yeah. and everybody well-intentioned as they are or no. And, and that was the mood, Maria. So uh, is that a fair assessment that there's no patience for the complexity? I think we, we absolutely recognise the complexity that's involved, but equally, you know, a player's lifespan and playing career is very short. Yes. And of course, they're going to be selfish. And of course, we're going to want this tomorrow. But if I think to generational players like Vicky Wall, to think that she may never experience equality as a player in her playing career, that that, that scares me. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think there is a, I suppose, an attitude that we as female intercounty players shouldn't deserve the basics and the minimums. And I think what happened yesterday was players putting their hands up and saying, enough's enough, something yeah. needs to change. Yeah, and, and like the instinctive reaction, I think of everybody was, well, like bloody right, you know, there's a lot of money here, integration is happening. You're not, I mean, you look through the requests, they're pretty basic and they should be pretty manageable. So, I mean, I, I found myself thinking, Aoife, like, even if the GA weren't somehow well-intentioned, and I think they are, but even if they were cynical about it, what a, what a great, like, gesture on their part to say, yeah. well, do you know what? We're going to step up and, and yeah. we believe in equality. And under my presidency, Larry McCarthy, you know, the press conference, we're doing this, even if it was a c cynical, and I'm not saying it, yeah. it would be. There's so many reasons why it would be good for the GAA to take a lead on this. Yeah. Is there any, and you've spent a lot more time thinking about all this than the rest of us, I suspect. Is there any reason why the GAA would justifiably be able to say, oh, well, that, that would be an ill-advised thing for us to do at this stage of integration? Well, a lot of this is based on what we've looked at. And, you know, I think it does come back to the other murders that have happened in, in sport. Cost and the cost of female players is, is a fear and it is a worry. And I don't think anybody has named it and identified it. And, and that's the thing. I'm, I'm surmising here based on what I've done looking at other research because I, I'm not any the wiser around why they wouldn't. But in other murder situations, the cost of the women's side would be a big fear factor. Um, and the loss of identity, maybe not so much. I think cost is the elephant in the room. Like, for example, Galway Gaelic Games released, I think Paul Bellew was on your show or he was on OTB. Um, now, I'm going. we're doing some work in Galway. I'll come back to that in a minute. But Galway spent two million on men's inter-county teams. I don't know, was it last year or the year before? Mm. Now, that is going to freak everybody out if they think that that has to double and we have to do that. So I think cost is the big worry here that people, county boards are thinking we're going to have to take this all on. But I think Maria pointed out, and I think she was genuine around it, we're not expecting things to double or things to be instant straight away. I think there's a progress towards it. And personally, I probably think that there needs it's a really good opportunity to reflect on the spend on the men's side. Generally, because anyway. Because nobody yeah. is saying that we can turn around and spend four million on Galway Gaelic Games. Like, what, what would be the point of me being a member of my club if that was happening? So um, I see it's a huge opportunity here. And I agree with you. This will be the greatest thing that will happen in Gaelic Games since the foundation of each of the three organisations. I would be very excited about it. But, um, you know, and just, just to point out in Galway, to be fair to the GA Camogie and football, we've set up a working group. And with each of the chairs are fully committed to it. We've player representatives as well. And we probably would really like a bit of guidance and leadership. Like we're, we're trying to make progress because we know there's going to be a lot of change ahead. Um, so I think there's a lot of goodwill that people might respond to if they did take a step forward around supporting counties in this space. Yeah, because it was interesting, Liam O'Neill, uh, has described like the biggest failure of his presidency was twice in 2012 and then again in 2015 a motion for integration was rejected mm. and that's a huge regret of his and so you wonder if the current leadership are, are thinking well how will this be viewed in another 20 years if we dig our heels in here and have a year of the steering group listening and another year of talks and another year of this meanwhile as you say Maria careers are short any sense of the cost 
uh, that the GA would incur here, Maria, if they did step up? Um, no, I think that depends on if it is phased, what their appetite is, what they would look to fund. Would they look to fund maybe the basic medical and player welfare side and then maybe the second phase is player expenses? From our side, we're, we're fully open to sitting down and exploring that with the three NGBs because it, it, it's, it's not just a GPA and GEA conversation. The LGFA and Camogie do need to be involved also. Yeah. And to be honest, this is going to set a precedence for how you know, how, how all four of us work together collectively to a new integration of one association as well. So, um, look, I don't think t- there is an X amount on it. Yes, I'm an accountant, but I actually haven't crunched the numbers on it yet, but uh, we're, we're very much open to exploring what that looks like. And I, I suppose that was the frustration on Monday that on the back of the player report that the GPA published, the request was made to the three organisations. Do you know what? This is? This doesn't make for great reading. Can we sit down and talk? And, and yeah, and look, that that re- we presented that data uh, and made that request on the 21st of March to the integration committee with Murray Mercules and the three uh, representatives from the NGBs. So um, we, we haven't gotten a yes on that. It, it's very much the integration process is is in you know working its way through. Uh, we're in a listening mode. We're not addressing this until integration is being completed. Right. So come back in five years. <laughs> Might be the word because it's even it's it's probably quite striking, Aoife, that uh, this is the first in a, in a real rounded way. This is the first matter that the LGFA, the Camogie Association, and the GA have to deal with as one almost. And they're releasing different state. You release your statement, we'll release our state. Like they could have actually. Yeah, in symbolic terms, released mm. a joint statement. So it's kind of, you know, LGFA are, are, are denying, well, we did come back to you and it's all getting a bit petty early on publicly. That Even that's not a great first step. Probably not. And again, back to the work, when you start to keep working independently, not when you start, when you keep working independently in integration, you know, when you, if you're in that mindset, it can indicate towards a lack of trust. I'm not saying that's the case in this scenario, but in other mergers, you know, if you keep going ahead and doing your own thing, it, 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 it is suggestive of, are we actually fully committed to this? And I know in the report, we had a timeline. We're talking about this for nearly 50 years. Yeah. You know, since since Ladies Football came on board, there was talks of affiliations. There was a, there was a one county model, actually. It, it existed. There was a pilot in six counties. We're dying to figure out what happened there. So um, we've had lots of iterations. And now, to be fair, I do feel there's a commitment this time. And, you know, I, I do think it's genuine. And Mary yeah. McLeese would not be getting involved in something that wouldn't be wouldn't be the case there. But... Um, look at my own senses I don't see anything wrong with sitting down and like the one club model that we would have a one county model and that we the goodwill our values in Gaelic games are our community inclusion the headline of the GA is we all belong look at it those don't need to be hollow values we could step up here and do something really strong I think as you said Joe it would be a massive gesture Mm -hmm. Um, maybe there's stuff we don't know about around the complexities of it internally in the GA but um, I, I, the, the GPA sound like they're asking for a conversation and, and a working group to be set up. A working group where I'm members of too many of them, but they never do any harm. You know, ha- having conversations are good. Maria, should the um, current state of play continue, GA declining to talk, LGFA in their statement really standing by their record? You know, just a sense of let the steering yeah. group do their job and we'll, we'll continue as we are. Is this likely to escalate very very soon as in this season or or is your sense that the players will play out the season quote under protest and fulfill the fixtures or w- what is the mood do we know yeah so players uh, will fulfill the rest of the fixtures for the 2023, 2023 season and play under protest uh, whether they will commit or fulfill duties around an actual playing of games uh, to facilitate NGB promotion of the games is yet to be seen and it's very much you know we wait to see the response from the NGBs on this it, it's it's over to them to make a response um, and then come the beginning of 2024 season everything's back on the table it's um, you know the the possibility of uh, striking isn't going to be taken away at that stage and that's how serious these girls are about, you know, finally pushing on and changing the culture for female intercounty players. Okay. Eve, I'll give you a final word. How do you see this playing out over the next number of months? Well, I, I mean, I, I 
feel that there will be something around Congress next year that, you know, it seems like there's a listening process. Now, interestingly, golf took three years to do that listening. They had very detailed communication to clubs. We've had three statements and, you know, so a lot of what's in our report, I, I would hope, and to be fair, we have been in contact and I think we're getting a chance to engage because we've probably brought this evidence piece. So I think something will come before us next year. But the big thing I have is we have to have a plan for post-merger because just to reiterate, the level of change to deliver on equality is going to be a shock to everybody in the GA and including myself and my own club and our counties. Um, and I would hope in the same breath that issues like this that are so important, we can get ahead of them. They're always doing things together. The three organisations have goal games, they have cool camps, they have a sports science framework, they have one club guidelines. The precedence is there to do something in this regard as well. Okay. So hopefully that will come about. I suspect it won't be the last time we talk about it, to say the least. We will see how this current situation develops. But for the time being, Dr. Aoife Lane, head of the Department of Sport and Health Sciences at TUS Midlands, and as well part alongside Katie Liston and, and Connor Myler of uh, the team that produced uh, a policy brief, which is very much available for people to read, a, 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 a thought and a theoretical outlining of how integration might go. And Maria Kinsella co-chair of the GPA's National Executive Committee, former chairperson of the Women's GPA and uh, former Carlo footballer as well. When life was a, a bit simpler playing for Carlo than all this, I suspect, Maria. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm jealous of the days I could just put on the boots and go on and play, but um, no, look, we... we we love what we do as well with the GPA and we hope to make a difference as well. Yes, well, hopefully there is a resolution. It doesn't seem any great reason why there shouldn't be in the short term. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Bye.